Joe Zorzer and Dr. Malone here again for another installment of the uh, medical legal discussion that Dr. Malone and I have every so often. Uh, last year we, uh, we talked about this flesh-eating bacteria that can, is found in salt water. And at the time we first covered the subject on this channel, we didn't, um, we didn't have any local recent uh, examples of this. But since we had that segment last year, in fact, within the last 30 days, there's been a local case of a Gulf Breeze man that actually passed away from this Vibrio uh, bacteria that you can get from being, uh, from being in the wrong place in the Gulf and having an open sore or becoming, uh, gaining a wound from a, a source that has this uh, bacteria. And it's a flesh-eating bacteria that I'm sure you read about in the various papers around town here in Pensacola. But uh, Dr. Malone's just going to touch on it again. We've got another segment that we've done on this already, but since it came up again in the news, we're going to talk about it a little bit uh, again, what to do, what to look out for. If you know anything about this particular case where the guy passed away, what, did he have any of the comorbidities or the disease factors that made him a better candidate, or not a better candidate, a worse person to get this, worse I, patient to get this? Put him at higher risk. Yeah, higher risk. Thank you. Um, Okay, well, so flushing bacteria is what you see in the news, what right. you see in the lay media. It is Vibrio vulnificus. That is, as most people understand it, the reason why you do not eat oysters in certain months of the year during warm water months. That is what the infection is, because you can ingest it. That is when it is most commonly fatal. So, take I, I guess the problem is people eat oysters and they get sick and they throw up for a bunch. That's not Vibrio, though. Or is it? Not generally. No. Okay, all right. Um, but the, the, You're the, talking the, about something else. Yeah, but the reason why they say avoid it in the warm water right. months is because Vibrio is more prevalent. Okay. Vibrio is in the Gulf of Mexico, predominantly in the Gulf Coast states, Mexico, Mississippi, Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida. The warm water, you know, anything between 70 and 85 degrees, this stuff loves it. It's there all year long, all summer long, just more in the summer. So when you hear something in the news like, oh, I'm not going in the Gulf, you're a fool because it's out there all the time. When you should go in the golf is when, you, like Joe said, you have a, a large open fresh wound, a deep fresh wound, not a little shaving head. Okay, so big wounds are something that puts you at higher risk to get this, what we call super infected, where the wound's already got bacteria in it from your skin, then a new bacteria gets in there and sets up shop, and that's when you get what we call the flesh eating bacteria. In extreme cases, it can cause amputation, tissue loss, to the point where like you literally are leaving the hospital some many days down the road with parts of your body you can flay it away. Um, you can also die from it. The case that you talked about in Gulf Breeze, I, I can't cite any specific examples, but you did ask what put someone at higher risk. Anybody who's immunocompromised to begin with, so someone who's, believe it or not, diabetic, you're actually having a compromised immune system already, no matter what. Um, someone who's a cancer patient in chemotherapy, someone who's got some sort of liver dysfunction or kidney dysfunction, your immune system does not work like someone else who does not have those issues. So you are at higher risk to get what we call this systemic version where it gets into your bloodstream, you get full shock from this, and those are the people that die sometimes before you get to the hospital. The things you need to know is if you develop a wound while you're in the Gulf, fishing, you know, a, a, a fishing hook, you step on a crab pot, um, you get cut by some barnacle, you are at very high risk to have this, especially in the summer months. Get out of the water, clean it very well, multiple times, you know, disinfect it with something even like rubbing alcohol with hydrogen peroxide, you name it. If you start seeing some redness in this area, you're getting some feverish chills, get to a hospital. Yes. Okay, you need, likely, hydro antibiotics. Well, that's good advice. And um, I think the part that's most alarming is that this man was in shallow water fishing. I, I can't remember what he had on, but I don't think he had waders on. I think he had maybe booties, but nothing. And he gets cut, it sounds like, and, and he dies. So, I mean, it's um, a pretty innocuous activity that can kill you. Um, so, I think his advice, Dr. Malone's advice, is, is, uh, should be well taken in the sense that if you have an open wound, don't get in the water in the summer months. That's that simple. A big one, a big open wound. If you get cut in the Gulf, I don't know that I'd wait till you get a fever. I think that if you're, if it looks bad and it starts getting red for no real good reason, maybe you should go see somebody, your primary doctor, or call somebody on the phone, whatever, and find out maybe if there's something you should uh, look out for before you, before you can get that sick. 
But um, anyway, we've got another video on this. <clears throat> if you want to look for it, it we, we did it last year. Um, we're, I'm probably going to link these two once we post this. But uh, you should be able to click on that one just from this one. Um, if you have other questions about this or any other legal topic, uh, medical legal topic, let us know. 855-HIRE-JOE is my uh, phone number on the web at zarzalaw.com. Thank you.